My stepson had the nerve, the audacity to attack me. And guess what? His father is not even believing he did it. He said, I fell down the stairs. Guys, this is ridiculous and I'm not going to stand for it. So I decide to do this to my husband. Have you ever been in a dilemma where you wondered if you should continue your relationship or break up with the person? Because it's not the person with whom you're in the relationship that is toxic, but the people in their lives are. So is it the person's fault that he or she still associated with them? Or are they just victims of their circumstances? I can't understand whose fault it is, so I came here to ask you guys. Hey, I'm Amber. Well, on this side, and I'm writing here to you guys to distract and calm myself because I'm on the verge of tears. And you know what? I can't even cry because my face hurts so bad right now. A day ago, I regained conscious at the hospital. I was on bed rest for a day, and the doctor said that I was lucky not to have any fractures or jaw misplacements that could disfigure me for life. Um, I saw my family members waiting outside the door, and I was angry and helpless at the sight of Bill, my stepson, beside my husband. I started calling him out, but it hurt me too much to open my mouth. His fiance Alex, tried to calm me down. The pain was getting worse until the nurse injected some painkiller just to ease the discomfort and strictly advise me not to speak for a few days. The injuries will take some time to heal, and the nurse changed my bandages and advised me to take liquid food only because chewing is also not advisable. I was really upset and ruthless. Remembering whatever happened the last time before I got admitted, the only person I allowed to be in my room was Alex. She was the only person who could sense my emotional turmoil, and hence I felt more comforted to have her by my side. Being an old woman in my late forties, my relationship with Alex was like a mother and a daughter. I know daughter-in-laws are no less than daughters, but there is something else about Alex that reminds me of my own daughter, who is no longer in this world. But that's a long story that I might say for later. Anyways, right now I wanted to scream the truth out loud. But I could not. I could only point out Bill, who was sitting in a wheelchair with a fractured leg and have a few scars and minor wounds on his face. Alex obviously understood and told me that Bill was injured. Maybe while beating him, I mistakenly pushed him down the stairs, which led him to fracturing his leg, and he came to apologize to me before leaving. Alex said that she was more worried than um, curious about what had led things to get so bad that I ended up getting violent with old Bill. She was really concerned about the both of us, but knowing that it's not the right time to bring this up, she told me not to worry about it, and I was happy that I at least had someone by my side who was so patient and absolutely understanding. After a few minutes of Alex's casual conversation, I heard a knock. Alex answered the door and it was Henry, my husband, asking to come inside and also asked me how I was doing and everything, but later he expressed his disdain towards the fact that I should not have beaten Bill just because I caught Bill smoking something. And by the time he finished his sentence, I lost my cool because Bill had straight up told lies after lies and everybody was ready to believe him. I tried to get up and could only manage to utter, he, he hit me. But it must be understood by the one who's willing it to. So Alex popped up and tried to calm me down while telling Henry to give me some time. Maybe I was in a condition to not talk it right now. So Henry just left reluctantly and Alex said that I should rest for a while and stop thinking about everything. I did what she said and saw her leaving, probably to find Henry, but I don't care. I wanted to get out of this place and as soon as possible. I I could still hear those faint sounds of Alex and Henry talking behind the door. Henry was confiding in Alex about his dilemma and the confusion, and he was really unsure about the situation right now because both of us were in pain and the victims. He has no sides to choose from, as he loves us both equally. He says that Bill's got a fracture on his leg, claiming that I beat him, and looking at him, he could not believe that his son could do such a thing. He feels sorry for me, but he does refuse to believe that his son has any contribution to my suffering, and yet he's ready to apologize to make me feel better, even though it won't be okay. I was shocked by the allegation. I 
was so absurd how a woman approaching her fifties had enough strength to attack a man in his twenties, it doesn't make any sense. In fact, it does sound ridiculous. I felt helpless and furious at my condition because the two and a half words which took all my strength and effort to make audible to him didn't even matter when it came to his son. I felt betrayed that my love was not strong enough to let him see the truth because his son's love blinded him. I had so much to say, but it seems futile now. I felt like crying, but the medication started hitting me and I lulled myself to sleep. I woke up and saw a nurse with Alex. She looked happy to inform me that I've been discharged from the hospital and they just waited for a few more test results and it was normal, so I'm good to go. While exiting, Alex claimed that Henry wanted to drop me home. So at least I let him do this favor by letting him help me so that he would not feel guilty for leaving me alone. After waiting a few moments for my response, she further added that there's no pressure. I could deny it even if I didn't want to go with Henry. I loved Alex's maturity, and somewhere I felt sorry for having Bill as her husband. I want to keep her away from Bill, and I wish that Henry would support that. But for now, I want to distance myself from Henry, who's acting more like a father to his son than my husband. So I denied it, so she called a cab for me. On reaching home, I was accompanied by Alex to help me out. Henry offered to send me a full-time caretaker to look after me. But I refused, and I also sent Alex back to her place. I just finished my meal and took my medicines, and I'm typing this down for you guys, and I don't know how my stepson Bill has gotten himself injured, but am I overreacting uh, over my stepson? Anyways, you guys got the crux of it. If my stepson Bill accused me of beating him while I'm not even in the state to speak for myself, and even if I tried, I fell on deaf ears of my so-called husband. Or, once again, am I just being dramatic? I want to say so much right now, it would be better to begin from the start, but right now, I'm getting drowsy and I need to rest. I'll get back to you guys soon. Have a great day. What's up, everybody? We're going to check out two comments right here. Mr. Redito checking in before update number one. The first comment says this. OP, we feel sorry for you. What just happened is beyond acceptable. I mean, I'll advise you to report to the police or seek legal means. But anyways, we cannot say much. But we could say for sure that you're not at all overreacting. No matter what's happened, violence is never acceptable. So talk it out loud. Don't give up. Your husband will surely believe you. Get well soon. Comment number two says this. OP, I could hardly believe your story. Why have you not texted your husband if you can't speak? Ugh, he may have believed you without evidence, and if he doesn't, then he doesn't love you enough. I mean, come on. Anyways, we feel sorry for you, though, if you are going through this, but you can only conclude better if you talk things out instead of just assuming or giving up on him. Update number one. Hey guys, I'm back. I have to tell you a little backstory of everything we just talked about previously. So it all started six months ago when life gave me a second chance by bringing Henry to me. I'm in my late 40s and he's in his mid 50s and it's quite rare to find somebody at your age who's so perfect for you in every sense. I was at my kitty party with friends at a small cafe. After some time, a bunch of drunk guys turned up and they looked quite fishy, which ruined our fun. We turned cautious and a thought of not staying long enough at the place. It was later found out that they were friends of the manager who was happy to offer them drinks and sent the waiter even to take special care of them. Meanwhile, he ignored us when we asked for another round of side dishes. Feeling awkward, I wanted to pay my bill and leave, but I was stopped from doing so. And that was the moment I met Henry. He was at the cafe, he was the owner, and requested that we stay for a bit while... He immediately ordered the waiter to be hospitable to us, also sensing our discomfort, witnessing the men joking and laughing loudly while giving us side glances, he threatened the guys to behave themselves or leave, and made the manager take responsibility. But unfortunately, things got a little ugly when one of those guys got offended and started misbehaving, so having no choice, he kicked them out. He ordered his manager that he should not let such customers in again. The owner came to us asking for apologies on behalf of his manager. I sensed that the manager got irate. 
He seemed to be quite reluctant at first to accept it and didn't care if we would leave the place or not, so I wondered why the owner did not fire him right away. The manager just smiled at us and gave us a sulking look at the owner before leaving. I felt sorry for the owner when he left, followed by him. The waiters attended us thoroughly after that even served us with their special mocktails that were free at convenience. But that was needless, though. We took it. <laughs> I don't know why it was only me who felt obligated to thank the owner personally for his generosity. So after we were done, I excused myself and went to talk to the owner and maybe pay at least for a drink. <laughs> or perhaps I was drawn to him and mistakenly eavesdrop on the owner's conversation with his manager, he sounded less like the boss, but like a father advising him that his friends are not good company. And keeping in mind their behavior, he has to kick them out. They killed the vibe of the place. If his mother were still alive, she would have never been proud of him like this. Um, to which he replied, as if I care what she thinks or any woman in this world. It turned out that he was his son. And suddenly he saw me and he said, Here you go, Dad, your most favorite person arrived. It was awkward, but Henry again started apologizing and I could not stop blushing like a teenager. I insisted on taking payment for the free drinks, but he asked for a date in return. I happily accepted. <laughs> I took a mental note that dealing with this son would not be easy in the future. We blended well after a few dates and getting to know one another. I learned some things about Henry and Bill... How he had issues with his wife and his son ended up hating her when he saw his mother cheating on his dad. The lack of cordial relationships with his mom made him somewhat regressive. But Henry swears in his life that Bill is a good human and never wants to hurt anyone in general. I also want the same and after uh, learning about each other, we grew closer than we could imagine and Henry proposed to marry me. I was a little doubtful of Bill's reaction to the news of our marriage, and I always keep Bill in mind before taking anything further with Henry. Nothing was hidden from Bill without our relationship, but I was still hesitating to take the next step. I even asked him to wait for the right time to break this to him. Thankfully, the wait was not very long. I believe that things had truly changed in the case of Bill. One night, Bill invited a girl named Alex to dinner. Because the occasion was special, Henry invited me as well, and Bill did not mind my presence. And the moment I saw Alex, I was happier than Henry and Bill after meeting her, because her eyes and her hair, it reminded me of my daughter, whom I lost at a very tender age. She was 12. Blood cancer, very rare. My marriage broke apart after her loss, and now seeing Bill with Alex, I've concluded that he's not as bad as I perceived him to be. He slipped a ring on her finger... I was overjoyed. We all clapped for them in unison, and Henry was proud that Bill had changed so much, and it was evident through Henry's happiness. All my hesitation flew away, and seeing this time as it is, we both announced our plans to get married as well. Bill did not seem to mind, and it was better for me that way. I didn't know if Henry was right, assuming too quickly because things turned weird recently, or is it just me? I did my best to ignore Bill's acts to keep my ties intact with Henry. Even on the day of my marriage, Bill was drunk, and his same group of friends turned up making my friends and other female guests awkward feeling, and when I threatened to complain against them because Henry's friend's son, John, is a cop, he was also there. Furious at this, Bill gave a speech, highlighting everything that was embarrassing to people. See, Henry turned a little uncomfortable after the speech. He also felt guilty and indirectly tried to take responsibility for it somewhere. I didn't say much to him as I would hate to spoil the moment when he has nothing to do with this. Also, Henry was quite logical with the claim that I would not need to deal much with Bill because he was planning to move out. I was relieved and got engaged to make my moment special with Henry. While taking our vows, I swore to myself that I would not let Bill mess with my marriage this time. I tried to make the most of it during my honeymoon with Henry. I was determined to strengthen my bond before I dealt with any third person in our family. Because who could bypass problems like that? I dreaded returning to Henry's place, not liking Bill's presence in the home. Unfortunately, 
He was still there and had not moved out yet when I returned, and it wasn't like I hated sharing the space with Bill. I was only unsure about him yet. And honestly, I could not look eager for Bill to leave the place when it had not even been 48 hours since I've moved in. <laughs> So I let Bill have his time, and he was still trying to find and select the right place under his budget. I wanted to help, and obviously, directly approaching him would never be the right thing to do. So I talked to Henry to see if he needed assistance. He asked him about his housing planning and dinner, and offered to help him over it. And Bill snapped that Henry was eager to kick him out of the home. He mentioned something sensitive about his mom that just made Henry go off. And both of them left the dinner in between, and I just regretted my idea. Henry asked for some alone time, and I waited for him in our bedroom the entire night to come. But he didn't. The next morning, Henry left early for the office, and while I was downstairs, I could see the packed carton, a few boxes, etc., which made me sure that he was leaving. Bill was picking up those boxes, which were quite heavy, so I offered to help him out, but he stepped away. I could not risk him carrying something so heavy alone, so I insisted on helping him without caring for his response, and suddenly the box's bottom tore. I saw something familiar. It fell right there on the floor wrapped in newspaper. It was my family's heirloom. A clock and a vase, both antiques that I gifted to Henry. Bill yelled at me, asking why was I interfering? Baffled and furious, I'd retorted. Who permitted him to steal the gift that I have gifted Henry at our wedding? I picked up my phone to dial Henry, but Bill, he challenged me to go ahead because he himself had given that to him. He added that Henry gave him financial assistance too. He excused himself and left. He did not hesitate a bit, which shook my confidence. I stood confused, seeing him gather and stuff his cartons in his car. Before I could think of asking Henry, I get a call from Alex, who invited me to her birthday party. I get a text from Henry saying that I should not wait for him as he would be meeting me directly at her place. I still could not wrap my head around the fact that Henry could do such a thing. Anyways, I started preparing for Alex's party by selecting a gift for her, unaware of what awaited me there. As soon as I reached there, Bill was drunk as a skunk. I avoided him as much as possible, and when the cake was being cut, Bill was already so drunk, standing beside her, and when the slice was being offered to Bill, he smeared that on her face, ruining her makeup and outfit at the same time. I felt terrible for Alex that I took her away from him. And Bill could not stop laughing. Alex tried to force a smile, saying it was just a joke, but she was hurt by it. By the time I helped Alex wipe it off and gave her a touch-up, I told her she did not need to console herself. I would make sure that Bill apologized for his behavior. I started searching for him but could not find him anywhere. I heard strange noises at the terrace. I thought of leaving the place so as not to hinder privacy, but I was shocked when I heard Bill's name being taken by some random woman. I went back to confirm and was shocked to find Bill in an act. I could not stop myself. I yelled his name. He got enraged at my sight. The woman straightened her dress and disappeared from the scene. I picked up the phone to dial Henry, but he snatched it out of my hand and threw it from the balcony. I slapped him so far for that move. Bill grew furious and I was hit by a big blow of a punch that just starred my vision. I fell to the floor. He did not end up there, and before I could process it, I was hit by another, until I blacked out. Update number two. Hey guys, I think I should give up. I'm sick and tired of Henry and Bill's misbehavior. I'm going to leave them for the rest of my life. I'm seriously done. The words Bill told about me being Henry's second choice just still haunted me, creating insecurity in my mind towards him, and no matter how many... Bouquets, gift cards, fruit baskets. Henry can send. They mean nothing to me now. So, a few days ago, Alex visited me to see how I was doing and dropped off some essentials from the grocery store. My runes are much better now, and moving my jaw is not so painful, uh, though I was advised to speak less. So I wrote the entire thing in detail to tell Alex about the incident that happened at her birthday party. Right. While she had read the paper, in response, she tore it to absolute pieces. 
I knew she was angry, but she did not wait for me to say anything and left the place. I texted her, saying that I did not want her to end up with somebody like Bill. And you know what? She texted me back, asking for proof, but I had none. Alex never talked to me after that day. I hate to break her marriage, but I can't afford to risk her life around a person like Bill, let alone be committed to him. I wish I could save Alex, remembering all this gave me anxiety and straight desperation. I reached out to my husband. I replied to him by thanking him for his gifts and flowers, and I instantly got a text back saying that he wished to meet up with me. I think maybe having a one-on-one -on -one talk will uh, sort out the issue at hand. So, I opened up the door, because uh, he bought me flowers again. They had the same flowers that I had selected for my wedding. He tried to remind me of everything that we had shared, and before deciding where to start talking with Henry, he told me about Alex and Bill's marriage. And then I noticed Bill approaching in his wheelchair. He said that he's ready to go off at the matter, even if it is my fault. He wants to forgive me, and before I could decide how to react to his words, he handed me his invitation card, telling me to come to his wedding and... When I tried to tell Henry that Bill was cheating on... Before I could even complete the sentence, Bill, who could speak louder, interrupted me by saying that I'm lying. And I failed to turn Alex against him. That is why I pushed him down the stairs, because I got angry. Well, I still am, because he is a liar. Furious, I pushed his wheelchair out of my house, which stumbled onto a rock, and he fell to the ground. Henry ran to pick him up saying that what I did just then cleared everything that he did not need any justifications and left me right there. Bill turned around behind his back and smiled with a little wink. Update number three. Hey guys, um, I am back again, so I thought that things were over between me and Henry, and maybe I could do nothing to save Alex from Bill, but I feel the truth finds its way to come to light. It's been almost a week, and now I am able to speak a lot more clearly. I received a call from John. I realized I had not responded to his text yet, and he asked me how I was doing. I wasn't in the right state of mind to reply to him, so I received the call before I could answer. He said he wanted to visit me, but had to report urgently somewhere. John could only ask about me through Alex, and I was a little surprised to know that he knew this already, so I invited him home. I did whatever I could to welcome him. When I questioned John about how he knew about this, he told me that he found me lying unconscious on the floor with a swollen face and mouth bleeding. There was nobody around, and just then he saw a guy wearing a sports jacket running downstairs and he slipped. Instead of following him, John called an ambulance. Listening to him, I was grateful to God that he sent an angel like John to save me. Or else I would have been left alone for God knows how long, and I got emotional and told him that I was punched by my stepson, Bill. He was shocked to hear that. Till now, he was not sure if Bill was the one who did it because he himself looked injured sitting in a wheelchair with a broken leg. But now, after my confession, we had concluded that he might have slipped in a hurry and gotten hurt himself. So... I confide in John, telling him about my issues with Bill, and when I caught him red-handed while stealing, he lied. When I caught him in the act of cheating, he beat me up. John was absolutely furious and asked me why I had not registered the complaint against him before. I said that lack of evidence was the main reason that I could not go further. Though, um, Needless to say, I asked for his favor and find evidence against him before marriage. He was more than willing to do that, guys. I thought of updating everybody right, but I waited for things to get more interesting before I told you. So I waited for three days, and Christmas was also about to be here. I haven't reached out to Alex yet because I don't want to repeat the same mistake of lacking evidence, and it seemed like the universe was also conspiring against Bill because Alex herself arrived at my doorstep. But I was happy to see her, but looking at her state was quite concerning. She looked exhausted and started crying, and I noticed some red marks on her fingers and beside her cheeks, and I knew it could be none other than a Bill. Alex confirmed it when she told me how she could not believe that Bill could be dangerously violent. She had doubted the severity of the harm that he could cause a woman, which had sounded a bit extreme to her when I had told her about Bill's punching me. That's why she was angry earlier and left me. 
Alex still had doubts in her mind, and she went through his mobile, and her suspicion was confirmed. She confronted Bill while they were on their way to do Christmas shopping, and his lack of explanations resulted in his violent outrage. And he shoved her face. Alex, scared of him, imagined herself ending up like me. She jumped out of his car in the middle of the road, and she had to walk five kilometers until she got on the bus to get back there. I reminded Alex how I warned her about Bill's misbehavior when she ignored him for smearing the cake. She felt sorry and apologized for being angry at me. But now Alex could not wait to cancel her wedding plans, and the time could not be more amazing than this when I received a call from John to check my email. And there I found pictures of his illicit affairs and credit card transactions to shady motels. This was all that proved his cheating? But his unsolicited sources of income were also revealed, including my heirloom that was about to be sold at the pawn shop. And another important thing is that John found something really unexpected. While he was watching him, he noticed Bill walking freely around his apartment, where he had moved into. But he was also in a wheelchair with his plastered leg whenever Henry was around. So he clicked on the pictures of Bill putting up his fake plaster. Being a cop, John knew that a doctor must have been involved in this, and he also kept a record of whether the doctor had helped him in his injuries. Alex was getting crazier with every revelation that John brought forward, and though the information was quite fruitful, we both felt that we could not let him go uh, off uh, the physical harm that he caused us. This time we had John, the cop, and the evidence at hand. This had to be the best way to cancel the upcoming wedding. Update number four. Merry Christmas, people. Thanks for sticking with me for so long. Your wishes and suggestions have been so grateful so far that I haven't given up in the middle, and I'm glad that I have your back. Anyways, Bill had an incredible Christmas. Alex had organized a dinner at her place as part of the plan, and I helped her prepare an elaborate meal. John, our well-wisher, was obviously now invited, but he was supposed to arrive late. Henry turned up at Alex's place right on time, and a Bill, known as a latecomer, wasn't expected to arrive yet. John was on his way along with his colleagues, who were part-time bouncers as well, and Alex was waiting for things to begin. She asked her soon-to-be father-in-law to call up and check on him. Henry's word had some authority over Bill, and his involvement in misdeeds is hidden from him. John was on his way when Bill was about to arrive in just a few minutes. So, John came right on time with baseball bats, and the best part was that Bill had bumped his car mistakenly into John's leaving a nice dent. That led to him getting beaten up on Alex's porch. But it was just a warm-up for his friends. Henry, hearing noise from the outside, we realized that it was high time that we should reveal the truth about Bill. We showed him the pictures, all the evidence of Bill's misdeeds, and... I also asked Henry about my heirloom gift. He said he believed it was safe in the cupboard, but I told him about the entire incident when the box tore and the gifts were actually stolen. Henry was enraged, and I was relieved that Henry had not given it to him. By that time, John had done his deed and made sure that he got a real injury on his leg that he had faked with the plaster. So... He cannot give the excuse of breaking the leg, which is already broken. We could not stop Henry when he rushed outside after hearing Bill scream. He was standing and holding his fake plastered leg, saying it was broken, it was broken. Henry asked how it's possible with a fracture anyways. He had to confess that the plaster was fake, and now he's really, really injured. Well... Henry was confused to see him beaten up like this, and Alex removed the scarf and showed the red mark, saying it was a return gift from the both of us for hitting us. Angry, she kicked him again on his broken leg. Henry was getting jolted by shock one after the other, and John added that he found me unconscious with the bleeding mouth on the terrace when I caught Bill cheating on Alex. Bill was only injured when he fell from the stairs rushing down it. Henry starts to apologize profusely and kicked Bill out of the home, saying that his theft would be reported to John himself and he made sure to get Bill kicked out by the house owner to whom he owed his rent. Update number five. 
Hey guys, I felt obligated just to tell you what happened. Bill was arrested because charges of stealing and domestic abuse were pressed on him, which were done by Alex and me. Also, Henry filed a complaint for stealing. And talking of wedding preparations, they were not canceled. Yes, you got it right, folks. The wedding's happening. Only a few alterations were made, and we just replaced the groom. And the groom is John. He confessed that he got, well, personally invested in Bill's case when he saw Alex being humiliated by him at her own birthday party. He was really, really into her. Which is why he came up searching for her when he found me lying unconscious at the terrace. He swore to teach Bill a lesson when he realized that he had abandoned Alex. I was relieved that Alex found somebody who truly cared for her. And talking to Henry, we're doing great. He's even disowned Bill. And the cafe is managed by me and Alex now. Wow, guys, I'll tell you right now, the comment section was so upset with Bill. First of all, the way he acted was ridiculous, but second of all, they weren't just mad at Bill, they were mad at Henry too, Bill's dad, for enabling him for so long and even refusing to believe OP when she was telling him right then and there, hey, uh, are you not witnessing all these injuries on me? Anyways, guys, I want to know if you think that OP handled this situation properly. Some of the commenters did not seem to think so, so I'll come to you guys with what you think. Drop it down below in our comment section. My name is Mr. Redito, and if you guys are new to the channel, just know I drop a new story every single day. So, to be a part of these daily drama readings, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. It would be great to have you guys. I'll see you tomorrow, and of course remember, it's cool to be kind, and don't be like Bill! Peace!